Um, so my name's Claire Hunsaker. I work at Somasource. We have a web-based application that takes work to about 1,500 people in the developing world. And um, so we think very deeply every day about uh, internet connectivity and how people are accessing the internet in emerging markets. Um, we're gonna be announcing a mobile strategy early next year. Uh, it's, uh, it's in development, it's pretty exciting. Um, and I wanna start off, this is Kibera, uh, which is a slum in the middle of Nairobi. That's me on the left, I was getting a tour. I want you to think about a world almost entirely without computers. Um, in these places, there's very little electricity, there's very little running water, and there's certainly nothing to plug a computer into, much less the internet. So um, what, what they do have is mobile. Mobile penetration in the developing world is exploding, and it's exploding in really exciting ways. In Kenya, where we, we operate quite a bit, um, we see a ton of people who you wouldn't anticipate, not just uh, five people sharing a phone. Internet penetration at the beginning of the year was 63%. We think it's about 75 or 80% now. And so when you think about um, mobile in the developing world, what you think about is SMS and voice. But what we actually see is that those are in decline. They're in decline as the costs are also in decline. So it's cheaper for people to get on the phone. Um, it's cheaper for people to send text messages, and yet they're doing it less. Um, what they're not doing less is getting online. Um, at the beginning of 2009, there were about 3% of people in Kenya were internet users. Um, at the uh, end of 2010, it was about 26%. That's a 700% increase in 18 months. That is an explosion uh, that we're really excited about. Some of it was driven by cable. Um, they got a landline in early 2009, which basically brought all the businesses online. Um, but what it didn't do was bring people online because they don't have personal computers the way we do. This is actually a pie chart. It looks like Jupiter, but it is a pie chart. It was so big, I couldn't actually fit it on the, uh, the slide. 99% um, of new people paying to access the internet in Kenya, 99% of them are doing it through a mobile device. This is including all ways they could do it. Cable, little stick modems are actually number two. Um, this was shocking to me. They are entirely skipping computer subscription. Um, and, and that is exciting. Um, uh, Brady was talking a little bit about the Kenya phone. The Kenya phone is, is a hugely disruptive technology. Uh, PC World did this kind of cool uh, little study around how much does it actually cost to own and operate a smartphone. So in California, the average income is about $60,000. Um, and if you're running a smartphone, it's about 3% of your income. That's, that's totally doable um, most of the time, uh, unless, unless you're like me and overuse. Um, a year ago, there were about 12 uh, smartphones in, in the Kenyan market. Um, about half of them were Android devices. Um, but to, to, to purchase and actually operate one on a data plan was equivalent to about 31% of the average income. Think about what you could do with 30% of your income. You could buy a car with that. That's the level of luxury that a smartphone was 12 months ago. Um, the Ideos, which is the, the Kenya phone, also known as the uh, cheap Chinese iPhone, um, is an $80 Android device. Um, as, as, Bradley, as Brady mentioned, there's ostensibly 350,000 of them. They are apparently now half the smartphone market in Kenya. Um, and they're about to launch in Nigeria, which has twice as many people. Um, it, is, it is truly a killer technology. But the thing that's really cool about it is that they also launched it with a uh, pay-as-you-go plan. So the cost of entry to, to the Android market went from being you know, a car to 5% of your income. Now, 80 bucks is still a lot of money in Kenya, um, but it is a savable amount of money for many people, um, especially as they're growing and, and their economy is developing. Um, so what are they developing? Uh, the, at, in April, Google hosted the first Sub-Saharan Android Development Challenge, um, which is also a challenge to say. They had about 75 teams uh, from 12 countries, and mostly they focused on things that you would anticipate, games, social networking, uh, geolocation. I would really encourage, um, I'll tweet this, but um, I would really encourage everyone who's interested in participating in um, uh, app development to, in, in Africa to think to go check this out. They were all developed by local developers in local tech and innovation hubs um, in places like Accra and Nairobi and Johannesburg. Um, and the people there are super fired up. 
Um, I work in something called ICT for D, which is Internet and Communications Technology for Development. I did not come up with that acronym. Um, and we focus on slightly different things because we're interested in getting people closer to um, uh, over the obstacles that keep them from keep them in poverty, basically. Um, and so we send we have tended to see uh, a focus on information, payments, and, and increasingly some networking. Um, information in Android world in, in Africa right now is pretty cool. There's uh, things like the Mobile Media Toolkit and the Open Data Kit, which are allowing um, information to uh, be accessed broadly and well. Um, I think this is really exciting uh, because what it means is things like citizen journalism can happen when there's a moment of disruption. There's, there's really uh, well accessible information channels, which there weren't before. If you are in a rural part of the world um, where there's no electricity, no lights, um, your, your mobile phone may have a connection and, and increasingly does throughout, throughout Kenya and East Africa. And so getting information to those far-flung places is virtually impossible with a cable. The infrastructure is only 18 months old, but it's really feasible with a, with a mobile device. Um, and so the Grameen Foundation has done very interesting things around getting uh, farmers information around market prices, getting um, uh, health information out, um, creating Android apps for uh, mobile healthcare workers so that um, when the traveling midwife, uh, you know, needs information, she has access to it readily and can get advice from a doctor in a, in a different location. Um, another thing that is really big is payments. So in, in much of the developing world, people don't carry cash. It's not very secure, but your phone is secure uh, if, it's, if it's most of the time. Um, and what they have are, is this concept of a mobile wallet. 20% um, of the Kenyan GDP runs through the mobile wallet, 20% and 99% of people are on it, either because they're sharing or because they've, they've got some access to it. Um, you, all you need is a SIM card to have a mobile wallet account. You don't even need a device. Um, the challenge with these solutions is that they're, um, they're siloed by carrier and by country. And so one of the really cool things that we're seeing in, in the Android world is that uh, companies like Simple, Simple MFI, which is, um, uh, was, was done by a Google engineer, um, while he was on sabbatical, it, it allows um, uh, microfinance institutions to go into the field and disperse funds, disperse uh, loans from their mobile device to another mobile device, um, which used to be impossible. Um, it's bank agnostic, and it allows them to collect as well. And then earlier this year, Intuit, like actually quite recently, Intuit launched their uh, mobile banking strategy, uh, which is also um, country and bank agnostic. Or, so finally we get to networking, and one of the most shocking things that I saw when I was in Kenya was the unmitigated prevalence of Facebook. So I had, um, uh, th this is the Facebook page of a tuk-tuk driver in Mombasa who had friended me on Facebook before I ever got out of his car. Um, and it's kind of crazy because all of his posts are mobile. The guy makes virtually no money, and yet he was on this platform um, on a shared phone. That's a pretty intense thing. So it's worth thinking about, it's something that we're thinking a lot about, is that Facebook will have access to most users before they even can own a handset themselves. And so that means that it's a really great place uh, to push adoption, it's a really great place to, to get the word out, um, and I'm curious to see what other sort of things that inspires. So um, just a few thoughts, if you're thinking about uh, developing for the developing world, skip the web, a lot of people just don't go into cyber cafes anymore. Um, uh, you will need a fallback. A lot of people are using secondhand devices or local devices. Um, so keep in mind that the devices that they have there are not the devices we have here. Um, and then finally, um, I'll post these tweets and they're on the slides, but uh, there's lots of ways to get involved, especially on Git. Um, and if you're looking for a job, we are hiring like crazy. Thanks. <laughs>